give you all the glory, God. We give you all the honor, God. We thank you this morning, God. We thank you this morning, Father. We praise you this morning, God. We give you all the glory, God. We give you all the honor. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised, God. You are worthy to be praised, God. We thank you, Lord, this morning, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your unfailing love, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are an everlasting Father, God. We thank you this morning, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Oh, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We need you this morning, God. And we praise you this morning, God. We give you all the glory, God, and all the honor, Lord, in Jesus' name.
morning. You're excited to be in the house of the Lord on this beautiful Sunday morning. It was the psalmist David that said, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go over to the house of the Lord. Are there any of us here this morning that woke up with joy in their hearts and excitement in their lives to get up, to know that they were coming to worship and praise a mighty God, that were excited to know that they were going to be in the house of God with and family here this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's all pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you for what you're going to do, God. We give you the honor and the glory, God. Take full control, God. Lord, come here, God. Lord, meet with us, God. Transform us. Change us, God, here today. Have your way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Church, are we excited to be in the house of God here this morning? If that's you, if you're excited to be in the house of God, I want to make a plea to come to the front of the altar. Because here today, we're going to praise the Lord with everything that we have inside of us. Is that okay, church? It goes like this. Let everything say. Let everything say. That is breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
people in this place. And I am not, I am not satisfied. Therefore, I know my father cannot. For I know he has healed some people. He has delivered some people. He has freed some people. He has loved on you like no one has ever done before. So if he, if he delivered you, if he has touched you, if you have tasted and you have seen, I want you to proclaim this. God, we just want to show our love for you, God. Come on, here this morning, can we worship the King of Kings in his place? Despite the situation that you may be facing right now, despite the roadblock that you may be facing right now, can we continue to worship him because he is still good. He is still faithful. He was still kind. He is still seated on the throne next to the Father. Hallelujah. Come on, right through you. I don't want to encourage you, whether you're here at this altar or there in your seat, to lift up the name of Jesus to worship him in his place. Jesus, we thank you for being our Prince of Peace, Lord. Jesus, we thank you for being our strong tower, Lord. Jesus, we thank you, oh Lord, for being the light, God, for allowing your word, God, to be the lamp under our feet, God. Jesus, you are worthy. Come on, can somebody just call him worthy here in this place? Oh, you're worthy, Jesus, hallelujah. Glory to you, God, you are worthy. Come on, here this morning, you know what, what God has done for you. And you know what he is doing now in your life. Whether that be removing something or bringing in a new thing, praise God and worship God for it this morning. Oh, you're worthy, you're worthy. As it depends for water, so my soul thirsts for you, Jesus. I'll declare your glory. Mighty one, mighty one, we worship you.
Come on, church. Let that be your prayer here this morning. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, because your name is the name above all names. You deserve all the glory and honor in this place this morning, God. And we come to give you honor, Lord. We come to lift up your name above every name. We come to lift you up above every circumstance, Lord. This morning, God, you are the reason we are here, Father God, to worship you, Lord. Oh, come on, if there's a church that stands in victory, give them praise this morning. Oh. the Lord and we're so excited that you are here joining us for our Sunday morning celebration service. We welcome you on behalf of our whole church and our pastors, Pastor Francisco and Sister Sylvia. Welcome to Victory Outreach Grand Prairie. You are now family. Amen. That's right. You are part of the family. And so at this time, what we want to encourage you to do is get up out of your seat and greet somebody. Take this moment to just say hi because, once again, we're family and we show love in Victory Outreach Grand Prairie. this time as we make our way back to our seats we have some special international announcements on the screen for you at this time big big news bethy is now a part of victory outreach bible college our goal is to educate equip and inspire a generation of visionary leaders students earn an associates in biblical and theological studies and then a bachelor's in christian ministry at Victory Outreach Bible College, we provide pathways for all students, including the third wave generation, training men and women for effective ministry. And for those who feel God's calling to be a licensed minister, now is the time to take the next step to further your academic training and prepare for effective ministry. 
enrollment is now open. Bethy is not going away. Instead, it's a fundamental part of VOBC. Our goal is to graduate the best, the brightest, the boldest, and the bravest visionary leaders who will continue the legacy of Victory Outreach International in the inner cities around the world. Start today. Visit VOBibleCollege.org. I'm coming out of the battle and I'm stepping in to a brand new season. There is a future for us. There is an anointing for us. The anointing is going to explode. There are miracles. We are living in the last days. Estamos viviendo los últimos días. You rise up. You've been given the authority to speak to every mountain, speak to every stronghold, speak in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Ooh, come on, are the mighty men of valor excited? Can I get a strong hoorah? That's what I like to hear, guys. Mighty men of valor, the countdown has begun. We are less than three weeks away. So if you still got things you got to put in order with your job, with the flights, your, your hotels, I highly, highly encourage you, do it tomorrow. First thing in the morning, get it taken care of. Because we are believing for a mandate for the mighty men of valor here in Victory Outreach, Grand Prairie. Come on, we got to get excited. I don't know about you, but I, I'm ready to hear all that God has for me at that mountaintop. And I know it's not just for me, but it's for every man here, every gang warrior here. So get on board. There's still time to sign up, to get registered, and get there. Once again, Mighty Men of Valor is May 7th through the 10th. So make sure you're there. What else do we have taking place? Yes, we have so many things taking here locally as well. And we want to announce our third wave service every Sunday at 4 p.m. And that's for all young adults, high school students, junior hires. We're here at the church at 4 p.m. Make sure you're on time, okay? We start exactly at 4 p.m. And it's amazing just to be able to hear the word of God and continue to grow. And then following that, at 5 p.m., right after we start our live flow, we are on our second one. And we are excited. We're going to be going over um, different topics. Uh, one of them today is over hell and heaven, right? What we believe as a ministry about hell and heaven. Um, we're also going to be talking about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and just different topics that you don't want to miss. God has been moving in our life flow, so make sure you come. Our cafe is going to be open, so grab you a coffee, right? You don't got to go to Starbucks. And you can come here at 5 p.m. for our life flow service. That's right. And then tomorrow is the start of our spring semester of Victory Outreach Bible College. It's a wonderful way to just get a deeper understanding of God's word and for the love of the word. And so tomorrow at 7 p.m. is the Old Testament class, a great breakdown of the Old Testament. And it's going to be a wonderful class. Join us tomorrow at 7 and then also, there's another class on Thursday. That's going to be the Book of Acts. And that's a wonderful book, just learning the Acts of the Apostles, but also the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And so come, get equipped, and grow deeper in our understanding of the Word. Once again, Monday at 7 and Thursday at 7. Yes, and we also have our weekly announcements for our Wednesday G groups. Yes. We have different groups taking place all over the city and Bedford, right, also in Wilmer and then Grand Prairie, yes. uh, one yes. for married couples, yes. women's, a men's class, and we also have one here. Um, so we have different ones all over the city, and you can get connected to a G group every Wednesday night. They all start at 7.30 p.m. And then we have our Fired Up Friday service every Friday night. This Friday, man, we experience just the Holy Spirit, the move of God. And Friday nights, you don't want to miss it, okay? Come out Friday night, 7.30, uh, the service starts, and 6.30 for prayer. That's right. And then this Saturday, for all the mighty men of valor and all the gang warriors, we are having a discipleship. It's going to be a, yeah, we can get excited for that because God wants to get us prepared 
for all that he has in store for us. And so this Saturday at 8 a.m., we'll be here for prayer. And then 9 a.m., we're going to be kicking it off. So don't be late, but bring somebody, bring your friends, bring the men of God, and bring somebody so we can all become equipped in all that God has for us. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. That's all the announcements we have for you today. God bless. Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody say bless my soul and everything that is within me. Praise God. Somebody say epic. We are an epic church. Come on, say it. Say we are an epic church. Now you may say, well, what does EPIC stand for? EPIC stands for a lot of stuff. It stands for awesome. Yes. Come on, tell your neighbor you're awesome. You're awesome. Tell them you look awesome. awesome. But tell them I'm awesomer. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. <laughs> but EPIC also stands for everyone has a place in the church. Come on. Yes. Come on how many yes. agree with that this morning? Yes. And uh, this morning is a celebration because we are giving away some certificates this morning to a few people that have, that have really accomplished some great things in our church. Amen. And, and I'm excited because these are all just new people that are coming into the kingdom, that are coming into the church. And, and God has really been working in their lives, working in their families. And I'm, I'm excited. Me and my wife are excited yes. because we get first first hand, first row seats yes. to what God is doing in all of your lives. That's Amen. Right. And so this morning, we're going to acknowledge some people this morning, and I'm going to call up Sister Amanda, and we're going to give away this morning some epic certificates. Yes. And um, this morning, our, ep our epic certificates are going to uh, many of our new people that have been coming, and they've gone through our, 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 our epic uh, newcomers class that we've been having. We've had some there on Sunday after service. We've been meeting with the newcomers and we've been having lunch with them and we've been sharing with them about our ministry, about who we are as a church, our history, and some of our, our uh, and what we're about as a ministry. And so they've been coming faithfully. Uh, these people that we're going to acknowledge today went through the whole process. Some of them came on Wednesday and, uh, and they took their spiritual gift test, and, and they're starting to grow. They're growing, and they're finding their place in the ministry. Yes. Amen? Yes. How many know we're called the body of Christ? Yes. And, and everyone is part of this body, and, uh, and, and so we're, so we're so proud of them just accomplishing this. And, and we pray that, that as they get the certificate that they feel like they have accomplished something, and also they feel a part of VOGP. Praise yes. God. And so we're going to acknowledge them this morning. And then also we're going to give away baptism certificates for all those that got baptized last Sunday. Some of them, they're going to get two certificates because they got there. They went through Epic and they got baptized. And so we're excited about that this morning. And so how many know we want to celebrate them? Amen. amen. Praise God. So this morning, amen, as we call your name, we're going to call up the, the, uh, the which ones are we doing first? Baptism. The baptisms first. And I'm going to have my wife share a few words, and then she's going to call them up. And when you hear your name, we want you to come up. Amen. We want you to come up and get your certificate. And uh, we'll, maybe we'll get the, our, the camera people ready, and we'll take your picture with, with us. And then you could just stay up here on the stage, just line up behind us. And uh, at the end, we want to take one big group picture. Amen. So I'm going to hand it over to my wife, and uh, she's going to share and then call your name up. Amen. Well, we're so excited to celebrate you this morning. Amen. I know this is a big accomplishment from all of those that took our epic classes and even being baptized. Amen. How many know that that's a big step of faith that you take, that you say, you know what? I am committed. I'm going to be so out. I trust in the Lord. And, you know, we are so excited to celebrate you this morning. So as you hear your name, we want you to come on up. And, and like my husband said, we want you to stay up here so we can take a picture with you. Amen. So our first one is Stephanie Serata. And these 
These are for the baptismal certificates. Julian Rodriguez. Julian Rodriguez. Jose Rodriguez. Jose Rodriguez. Jose Rodriguez. Joe Escamilla. Susan Hernandez. Mitzi Castillo. Misty Castillo. Brittany Thompson. Brittany Thompson. Oh, here she is. <laughs> And those are all the ones that got baptized last weekend. So come on, give them a hand of praise. Let's congratulate them. That is a big step of faith, amen. And so we're going to call all of those that took our epic classes, amen. Crystal Gomez. Jose Gomez. Morales, Brittany Thompson, she's a Come on, give them a big, big hand. Come on, sta a standing ovation. And if everybody could take a step forward so we could take a pretty good pictures. All right, show them certificates. Me and my wife will get on the end over here. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's sing something. Worship team, help me out. Sing a praise song. To praise, shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance loud in pain. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. Now, all of my fears, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. want to congratulate all of you guys. I, I want you to know that uh, it's a big accomplishment, amen, for what you've done. It, it's a big step, especially to say, to, to, to not just come to church and give your life to Jesus, but to make a decision to be baptized, to make a commitment to come to the newcomers class, like many of you did, and to continue to come to church. That is a big, uh, that's a big, that's a big heavenly accomplishment. <laughs> And I can't emphasize it enough because I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. You know, it takes, it takes a lot, mind, body, and spirit to be able to make that commitment and to say, you know what, I'm going to serve the Lord. And so we're so proud of you, and we pray that you continue to serve the Lord here in our church and, and, and continue to find your place within the body of Christ. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Congratulations. Give them one more hand. You guys may go ahead and go back to your seats.
God bless you. We love you from the bottom of our hearts. Sing it out, worship team. What a beautiful, beautiful ceremony. Come on now. How many know we, we didn't always get certificates? Come on now. Amen. But now we're getting certificates in the Lord, and we're so very proud of you. Amen. Those that got baptized, those that completed the epics. Amen. And, and look to your neighbor. Maybe, maybe some of you didn't finish it, but you're on the way. Tell them I'm next. Come on now. So let's continue to con let's continue to grow in the things of God and here this morning as we get ready and we prepare our hearts to give here today and we want to call the ushers and if you came ready to give if you came ready to pay your tithe if you came ready to give an offering if you came ready to fulfill your pledge and give to united we can lift up your hands and the ushers amen they'll hand you an envelope this morning as i read this portion of scripture in second corinthians chapter 8 verse 7 it says this and i think this scripture is very fitting for this morning it says since you have excelled in many ways, in your faith, in your gifted speaking, in knowledge, in your enthusiasm, and in your love for us. I want you to also excel in this gracious act of giving. What Paul is saying here is he's addressing the Corinthian church and he's saying, you're a church that has potential. You're a church that's growing. You're a church that's on the rise. And when we look at Victory Outreach Grand Prairie, I believe that we see the same thing. That we're a church that is growing. We're a church full of potential. We're a church that God is just taking from level to level to level. But Paul reminds them and he says, but don't forget to grow in the act of giving. Amen. That's powerful. That's powerful. We, if we're going to do great things for God, we're going to need talent. We're going to need skill. We're going to need commitment. Yeah, yeah. But we're also going to need giving. Come on, somebody. Amen. Ain't that right? Yes. Amen. And that's only 10%. A tithe is 10%. So if you make $1,000 a week, you're blessed. That's $100. If you make $500, it's $50. Amen. And that's Telling God, I trust you. I trust, I really, truly trust you. Amen. It's not just telling, telling God, I trust you a little bit, so I'm going to give you 5%. No, you give him the full 10%, what belongs to God this morning and all the time. And we've learned how to tithe over the years, and we're blessed. God always blesses us, even when we're like, God, how are you going to do it? He always surprises us, always amazes us, and we've never gone without We've always been so blessed to have everything, our bills are paid, our things are covered, and he blesses us with even more than our bills. It could be a family member you're praying for this morning. So when you give, give with that person in your heart. I remember Irvin's mom would always tell me when I would pray for my son, I would give my tithe and write his name on it, believing in his salvation. So this morning, if you're praying for your son, for your loved one, maybe a sister, give. Give even more, amen, and God will truly reward you. And as we step out in faith this morning and we trust him 100%, it's such a beautiful thing as we continue to see his miracles. That's right. You know, and, and sometimes we come to a place where we say, man, I could barely afford to survive right now. Come on now. But, but that's a lie from the enemy, let me tell you. That's a lie because I learned this in the home. They said to trust in the Lord with, with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So what that's saying is that, you know what? If I trust God with that 
to be a tither, to give a 10% of my income of what I make when I get paid, when I get that check, and I trust God, I know that I'm trusting him with all. And that that 90% is going to do more than the 100% can ever do. Because God, let me tell you, God will never fail you. Let me say that for the people in the back. God will never fail you. God is faithful. He's, he's the creator of all, the he, uh, of all heaven and all earth, of all the gold on this, on this dirt that we call a planet. Come on now. He created that gold. He created the silver. He created the diamonds and the rubies. It all belongs to him. So it's limitless. And he loves his people. Back to, back to the Corinthian church. When we don't give our tithe, when we hold back, it ties our hands. We can only do so much. Have you ever been arrested? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. But what's the first thing that they do? They, when they detain you, they put your hands behind your back and they put cuffs on because they know you can't run that fast when your hands are tied behind your back. When we don't give, we tie the hands of the church. And we got to be able to be, we got to be able to have freedom so that we can reach all Grand Prairie for Jesus. So we say all that to say this, step out in faith. If you're not a tither, become a tither. Don't test me. Test God. That's what his word says. Test me in this, that I will not open up the floodgates of heaven if you bring the tithe into the storehouse. This morning, we want, as you fill out those envelopes, we want to announce the ways of giving. Yes. We can, of course, text to give to the number 833-950-0022. You could also give online to bogp.org. You could also give on the sites with the ladies. They have the square. You could come on up and give. And you could also sell your giving in to the number 469-556-5897. So many ways to give. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's all stand. Are you ready to give? We're, we're ready to give. Are you ready to give? Amen. Let's lift our giving to the Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord, because we know that everything comes from you. Because you're good to us, Lord. You never forget about us, God. Lord, you bless us with favor, with increase. Here this morning, God, we give with a purpose, Lord. We give to honor you. We give to build our church. We give for our lost, lost loved ones, God. We, we give towards miracles here this morning. Have your way in your people's lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's come give to the Lord, everybody.
they could turn on my microphone, please. Praise God. Amen. Well, thank you for your giving to the Lord. Why don't you grab your Bibles this morning and go with me to the book of Psalms chapter 90, verse 12. Psalms chapter 90, verse 12. Praise the Lord. Thank you, worship team. Praise God. Amen. And thank you for your giving. Amen. All the tithers. And how, how many continue to pay off their pledge? Let's continue to pay that pledge off. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's so that that what Pastor Irvin said, we could we are the church hands won't be tied. But, you know, also when you don't tithe, God's hands are tied. He can't bless you. He, because whenever you don't tithe, you tie the hands of God from blessing you. He says, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven. And when he says test me he's in this, he means test me in the area of giving your tithes and your offering. Amen. And praise the Lord. So let's be faithful. And also for the pledge. Amen. How many know the Bible says if we make a vow, we should fulfill that vow. Right. Amen. We should make a, especially if we make a vow to God. Amen. That's, a, that's a promise we made to God. We should come through with that promise. I've come through with my promise. Praise the Lord. Amen. I've paid off my pledge. Amen. I think probably about a short few hundred maybe, but we, we're done. Amen. Praise God. It feels good. feels good. Amen. When you when you fulfill your promise to the Lord. Amen. So let's be faithful in that and let's continue to give to the work of God. Praise God. This morning I titled this message. Tick tock. Tick tock. The mouse ran up the clock. Oh, you remember that one? <laughs> the message this morning is tick tock, tick tock. And I want to talk to you about time. Somebody say time. You know, the most valuable thing that you have is not sitting in the parking lots. The most valuable thing that you have is not the property you own. The most probably one of the most valuable things is your time. Some say time. time. Because with time, you can do a lot. And you know, the thing about it is that we ain't got a lot of time. It was a, about a month ago I shared with you about the scripture about how many on the Bible says that that man will have about 70 years. Now, the, that same scripture says if he's a strong man, he'll have 80 years. So those of you past 70, amen, you, you're pretty strong. But but an average, an average lifetime for a person is 70 years. And so what, when I broke it down, there's 365 days in a year. If you multiply that by 70, that means you only have about. 25,550 days. That don't even sound a lot. That's right. I mean, I've spent 25,000, like, and, right? <laughs> just living. Just, just breathing. A year I spend that. Come on now. My kids, that's how much I spend on feeding them. No, I'm just kidding. It doesn't sound like that, but you only have, if you, if you live to be 70, you only have 25,550 days. So my question to you is, what number, what number day are you on today? If you're 35 and over, then you're halfway 25,000. Check this verse out, the opening verse. Psalms 90, verse 12. It says, Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Let me tell you something about wisdom. Wisdom has nothing to do with how many gray hairs you have. And it has everything to do with how you spend your time. Let's pray. Father, bless the reading of your word here this morning, God. I pray that you anoint my life this morning to preach and teach. I pray, Father, that you would use me here this morning, God, to inspire hope, 
to stir your people up, God, to serve you and to live for you for these days that we have on this earth. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege it is to be in your presence, to gather around your word, to gather with your people the way you've told us to gather, not to neglect the gathering of the saints. And here we are in your presence on the first day of the week, Sunday, God, because we put you first. So, God, we honor you today with our time just by being in your house. We love you. We thank you in Jesus name. We all say amen. amen. You may be seated. We've been this year, we're going to celebrate 14 years of ministry that we started the church. I look back and I say, man, where did the time go? It was just like yesterday we were pioneering on Park Row. And I've been reflecting on this year, and I can't help but to think about the importance of time. Our time as people is important. And our time as a church and a ministry is even more important. We value our time. The Bible and the scripture says that we will be judged on how we managed our time on this earth. What did we do with this short time that God has given us on this earth? What are you doing with the short time that God has given you with your children? With your spouse, you know that your spouse belongs to God. Yeah. She, he, you're, just, he, you're, he, you're just on borrow time. God just lets you borrow him and borrow her. What are you doing with that time? Somebody once said, don't just count the days, but make the days count. Are your days counting, church? Sometimes we could just let days pass us by. I believe that that's what the psalmist here is saying. He's saying, don't just do time or don't just let time do you, but do something with your time. How many people here this morning say, you know what, I want to do something with my time. And young people, listen to me and listen to me good. Don't think that you could just waste time. Take advantage right now of the time that you have because I've seen too many young people waste time. Before you know it, you ain't going to live with mama and daddy no more. Before you know it, you're going you're, you're gonna to be 18 years old, and guess what? You ain't going to be able to go to high school no more. You're going to have to pay bills. You're going, to get, you're, you're going to realize who Brother Bill is. And time flies. I remember doing time in prison. And I remember some people in prison just counted off the days on the calendar. They just counted off the days till their release dates. But then there were others that did something with their time. They got a degree. Or, they, or, or some, uh, some, like myself, they took time to get close to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because I took time to get close to God right there in prison, you know what happened is it caused me to gain godly wisdom in my life. And because I gained godly wisdom, I was, I was able to do away with worldly wisdom. You know what worldly wisdom is? It's street smarts. Many of us, we used to get ahead because we had street smarts. Oh, you knew how to break down a car. You knew how to use a scale. You knew how to hustle. Oh, come on, we're still Victory Outreach, right? <laughs> that was that was street smarts. That was that was that was being a hustler. But oh, but when you get close to God, you learn to have godly wisdom. And godly wisdom tells you the wages of sin is death. If you live that lifestyle, you're going to reap destruction. 
I thank God for godly wisdom because I stopped reaping destruction and I started reaping life. I started reaping prosperity. I started reaping joy and peace because of godly wisdom. I didn't have no peace serving the enemy. I gained a heart of wisdom. See, as a ministry, if we're going to continue to make an impact, how many want to make an impact in our city? How many, wa- how many want to see the world turned around for Jesus? Our world needs Jesus. Come on, but we're, we're on the brink of a world war. Our world needs Jesus today. Jesus is coming back soon, but he's coming back for a church without spot or blemish. And, we, and, and, and listen, there's only, there's, only so, there's only so much you can do by yourself to make a difference. There's only so much that you can do by yourself to make an impact. But when we gather as the people of God, when we come together as a people of God, we can make a greater impact. We can impact your family. We can impact your children. We can impact this city, this community, when we come together as the people of God. If we're going to make an impact, then we got to make our days count. Every day has to count for the Lord. That's my prayers, Lord. Let my, let every day, let it count for you, God. Every day, every day that I wake up in the morning, every time, every day I wake up and my feet hit the floor, I want the devil to start trembling. I want every demon in hell to start trembling. I want every force of darkness to get ready. Because why? Because there's a man of God that has woken up. And he's ready to start some drama with the enemy. There's a song they used to say, I went to the enemy's camp. I went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what he stole from me. I'm speaking to anybody here in this place that the enemy has stolen something from you. He stole your dignity. He stole your purpose. He's trying to steal your children. He's trying to steal your destiny. He's trying to steal your future. Oh, but I'm speaking to some prayer warriors. I'm speaking to some men and women of God that when you wake up in the morning, the devil begins to tremble because he begins to say, oh, she's up. He up. They're going to call something in my kingdom. Oh, we got to go to the enemy's camp and begin to take back everything the enemy stole. Take back your marriage. Take back your teenagers. Take back your children. Take back your finances. Take back your mind. Take back your heart. But in order to do that, every day gots to count. Tap your neighbor, tell him, make it count. Tap your other neighbor, tell him, tick tock, tick tock. Time's a wasting, time's a burning. The hourglass is getting thinner. So this morning, I want to give us three points on how to handle our time. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. Three points on how to handle our time. Number one, you got to value your time. Tell your neighbor, value your time. How valuable is your time? Let me just put it like this. There are a lot of differences between a rich man and a poor man. There's a lot of differences between a billionaire and somebody that's struggling. But one thing that they both have in common in their everyday life is that they both share the same 24 hours as everyone else. Elon Musk, Bill Gates, They may have more money than us, and they probably live a different lifestyle than us. But the same thing that we got in common with all of them is that the same 24 hours they got in the day is the same 24 hours we got in the day. 
You may not have a lot of expensive stuff that the rich have, but what puts you on the same playing fields, huh? what puts you on the same playing field as these rich people is time. You both have the same 24 hours in a day. One secret of the successful is that they value their time. Now, I'm not saying that being wealthy is the only form of success. Being wealthy is not the only form of success because I know people who are sex successfully financially, they're wealthy financially. I mean, look at P. Diddy. They're successfully financially, but they're not successful in their marriage. Their marriage is tore up from the floor up. They're not successful in their family. Their children are not serving God. Oh, but listen, on the other hand, you may have a poor man, but that poor man financially has a good marriage. Has, a, has, a good, has, a, has some children that are serving God. I, I, may, I may not have a lot of finances in my bank account, but I thank God I got a woman of God. I thank God I got a woman that I can pray with. I thank God I got some children that know who Jesus is. I thank God I know I got some children that want to serve God. I define that as success. That doesn't mean that God isn't blessed me financially because I'm a blessed man. So success is not just about finances. There's people that are successful financially, but their relationship with God, they don't even got a relationship with God. See, when you value your time, you have priorities in life. And your priorities should always start with God as first on the list. This is why I said that this morning. That listen, it's good that you're in the house of God because Sunday is not the last day of the week. It's the first day of the week. Monday is the second day of the week. Saturday is the last day of the week. But Sunday is the first day of the week. And we learn to put God first on Sunday. We learn in the in my as for me in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to get up on a Sunday morning and we're not going to go straight to the menudo. We're not going to go look for the barbacoa tacos. We're no, 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 my friend. We are going to be in the house of God. We might pick up a taco on the way to church, but one thing's for sure. We're going to put God first. We're going to serve God first in our week. We are about God's business. It is having your priorities in line with God's. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all his righteousness, and everything else shall be added unto you. That's a promise. That is a promise. That is a prom That's a scripture that you got to carry in your heart. That's a scripture that you got to live by. If you want everything else to be added unto you, then learn to put God first. Take care of God's business. He'll take care of your business. We got to learn to value God. See, when you, when you value your time, you have priorities. And your priority becomes to put God first. God becomes first in everything. First, even first before your marriage. Even first before your children. Some people put their children first. And that's why their marriage is all messed up. And that's why their life, they're all depressed. They're all stressed. Come on, somebody. I've seen it. I've seen it so many times. People that put their kids first and they're all stressed out. That doesn't mean that you don't love your kids. No, 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 my friend, because listen, when you put God first, God teaches you how to properly love your kids. He teaches you how to love your kids by teaching you how to teach them how to serve him and how to put him first. You become a model. You become an example. And your kids begin to see my dad is a man of prayer. My mom is a woman of prayer. My dad and my mom, they're people who love God. They're people who put God first. And that's why they're blessed. And that's why they're successful. And that's why they're in love with each other. 
because they put God first. Yeah. Got to learn to put God first. He, 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 he is above all. I, I'm, I'm praying about, I have this, this, this thought, this idea about having what I call 633 Sundays. 633 Sundays. And on that Sunday will be the first Sunday of every month. The first Sunday of every month. And, and I, and I want to challenge, I want to challenge everybody out there in the city and everybody in the community. And I want you to challenge your family that don't come to church and challenge your friends that don't come to church. Just challenge them with this. Give them the scripture, Matthew 6.33, and says, listen, just put God to the test. Start to put him first. Just give him one Sunday out of your month. Just give him the first Sunday of the month. Just give him the first Sunday of the month. I'm talking about people that don't come to church. Not you, because you already do it. You're doing it every week, right? Huh? We put God first every week. But what about those that are not in the house of God? We, 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 you know, we, we bring out a challenge and say, you know what? On, this, on 633 Sunday, on the first Sunday of the month, get to the house of God. And see just by that the transformation that God can do in a person's life. Huh? So, so, so uh, we're probably going to do that, start a campaign in just 633 Sunday. And on that Sunday, we can see the house of God packed out because there's so many people that have been coming because they've made a decision. You know what? I'm going to try it. Listen, I've been doing it for 24 years. I've been learning to put God first. Putting him first in my life, putting him first in my day, and it's blessed my life, it's changed my life. That's what's changed my life, is putting God first before anything. Putting him first before finances, putting him first before money, putting him first before my job, putting him first before my marriage, putting him first before my, my children. Putting God first. So important that we put him first. So to value your time means to spend your time on what you value. That's what it is. To value your time means to spend your time on what you value. I don't know about you, but I, va I value God. Well, that was weak. I value God. So because I value God, I spend time with God. Every day in the morning, I do my best to make him and his word priority and first. Through prayer and Bible reading every morning to get up and begin to pray and begin to seek the face of God and begin to put on some worship music and begin to worship the Lord and crack open the Bible and read a chapter or two or three or four or five or sometimes a whole book depends. But nevertheless, I need God in my life every day. I just don't need him on Sunday. I need him on Monday and I need him on Tuesday. And Lord knows I need him on Wednesday and by Thursday. I definitely God but by Friday thank God for fired up Friday it's, it, it, I value God so I spend time with God to come to his house this morning to spend time with him to hear his word being preached I value my marriage so I spend time with my wife how many value their marriage we spend, so, so we value our marriage. We spend time with our spouses. I, I still date my wife. Come on now. Don't ever get away from dating. Sometimes, well, we ain't got time because we have kids. Listen, get them a babysitter. Some, people, some couples, they, they use their kids as an excuse. Let me tell you something. Them babies are going to grow up and move out. And you're going to be stuck with each other. So don't let them babies get in between you. It's time for little Johnny to sleep in his own bed. That's a, di that's a different married couple's Bible study right there. Huh? I value my marriage, so I spend time with my wife, just me and her. Come on now. We get away. We go on, a, we go on our own vacation. Live the, kids, live the kids, kids back. Hello, somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. I value my marriage, so I spend time. I value family. I value my children. So we make time for our children. I, I, I don't allow myself to get too busy in work and in ministry that I neglect my children. There's a scripture that says, what is the profit of man if he gains the whole world but yet forfeits his soul? 
My translation is, what does it profit a man of God to win the whole world for Jesus and yet lose his family? How can I, lose, how can I be trying to win the whole world for Jesus and yet I'm losing my children, I'm losing my family to the world? No, I make time, I make a priority to spend time with my children, even the grown ones. But the problem is they don't want to spend time with us no more. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I value people. I value people. Victory Outreach, we value people. Yeah. Why do you think we stand out there after, before service every Sunday? Oh. Every Friday. Because we value people. Yeah. We value people. So that means we value ministry. Because people are the ministry. So I make time, I make time for the ministry. I make time for people. I make time for you. I make time to reach people. I re make time to minister to the lost and to the founds. Listen, as a church, we got to minister to the lost and we got to minister to the founds. Amen. You're the found where you're getting ministered to this morning. Yesterday, we were handing out groceries to the community. Because we minister to the lost. When we do events and bless my city and go to the streets and we do dramas, we're ministering to the lost. Why? Because we value people. Listen, there's a lot of values that we have. We, and, and we have to make time for each of the things that we value. You value God, make time for God. You value your spouse, make time for your spouse. You value your family, make time for your family. You value ministry, you value people. Listen, how can you say you're a Christian but you don't love people? It doesn't make sense. There's no such thing, my friend. If you're a Christian, then you got the love of God inside of you. And that love is just not to love on your wife. It's just not to love on your children. Anybody can do that, but can you love the unlovable? Can you love the person you don't know? Can you love the treasure out of darkness? If we as a church just follow this order of valuing our time, we will make an impact and we will gain a heart of understanding. The second thing is not just learning the first was value your time. The second thing is redeem the time. Redeem the time. Somebody say redeem. redeem. In other words, don't waste time. Don't, let's just, don't let time just pass you by. My pastor would always teach us, he would always tell us in, in his preachings, he would say some, some people grow old in the church, but they never grow up in the church. So many people, sometimes they grow old in the church, but they never grow up in the church. They be, they're, they're spiritual midgets. But, they yet, but they've been here for 30 years, 15 years, 14 years. Listen, we got to mature in the things of God. And the way you do that is by redeeming the time. See, so many people, they grow old in the church, but never grow up in the church. And this happens because people become like drifters. And they just let time drift away. Ephesians 5.16 says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. We live in evil days. And so the Apostle Paul is saying, in other words, we ain't got a lot of time before, be, before Jesus comes back. So we got to get busy making sure that our time counts. See, make the most of every opportunity. That's a powerful statement. What opportunities are before you today? Think about it. Everybody here has an opportunity before them. You have the opportunity to become a great man or woman of God. You have an opportunity. You're in the greatest ministry in the world. This ministry has raised up hundreds and thousands of pastors and preachers. You have an opportunity to also be a man and a woman of God that God can raise up and use for his honor and his glory. But you got to take the opportunity. 
You know how you take the opportunity? Is when you register for VOBC. You have an opportunity to learn the scriptures, to know your stuff and know who you're stuffing. You have an opportunity to serve and do ministry. It's an opportunity. This is why we say epic. Everyone has a place in the church because you have an opportunity to be the hands and feet of Jesus. You know that you have the opportunity to do what Jesus did, except to die on the cross for our sins, right? But, 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 but God can use you to m- do miracles, signs, and wonders. You have an opportunity. You have an opportunity to grow in your faith. To grow in your faith. Listen, make the most of your time. Go win a soul. Every day we get up, we have an opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus. At your job, somebody needs to hear about Jesus. There's sinners at your job. There's sinners in your community. We have an opportunity to tell them. We have an opportunity to give them the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ. We have an opportunity to disciple someone. We have an opportunity to, to, to decide. You know what disciple is? It's simply teaching them what you know about Jesus. What do you know about Jesus? It looks to me, when I look at everybody around here, you know what it looks to me? It looks to me like you learned how to come to church. Come on, somebody. Guess what? You can teach somebody how to come to church now because you've mastered that. That's discipleship. Come on, this is how you come to church. We wake up, set the alarm at 8.30, 8 o'clock. If you're quick as me, maybe 9 o'clock. But you should set it at least 8, 7.30 so you can get here for prayer. You get up, brush your teeth, take a shower, find some nice clothes. If you want to iron, you don't have to iron. Come as you are. Stop by QT or Starbucks and get you some coffee. Or we sell coffee here at the cafe. And you just come to church. Follow me to church. Walk and follow me to church. And come on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk with you down, with, uh, down the aisle for the greeting party. I'm going to walk you to your chair. I'm going wa- I'm gonna, I'm gonna to walk you to church. Just sit there and just receive the word from the Lord. It's discipleship. We got to learn. Teach people how to come to the altar. Teach people how to come on. This is this at the altar call. This is how you make an altar call. After service, come. Come. This is where God's going to touch you. Come on. Close your eyes. Just close your eyes like me. See, I'm closing my eyes. You close your eyes. It's okay. Nobody's going to sucker punch you. Close your eyes. Lift your hands. Come on. Lift your hands. You don't worry. You're not going to go to jail this time. Come on, you, you, but you're going to feel the power of God touch your life. It's discipleship. Take the opportunity to work with someone. See, they may say, well, I don't have a Bible. Well, get them a Bible. They're free Bibles. You can buy somebody a Bible and have Bible study with them and just read the scripture with them. But make the most of the opportunity. Take advantage of the opportunity that is before you and work with somebody and make an impact in somebody's life. Men, all the men, where are the men of God at? Man, there's an opportunity before you. There's an opportunity before you to go to mighty men of valor. It's an opportunity to grow in your faith. Some of you, you've never left Texas. We have a small mentality. Some of you, you never left Grand Perry. You said, I was born in GP. I'm a dying GP. You have a small mentality. It, God wants to grow your mentality. He wants to give you big vision. You know why? Because he's a big God. He's not a small God. He's a big God. Did you see the eclipse the other day? You know who did that? My God, because he's a big God. He's not a small God. It's not a small God with a little G. He's a big God with a big G. Quit spelling God with a little G. Spell him with a big G. You say, well, well, I don't got the money to go to mighty men of valor. No, you don't got the faith. He's a big God. You can have big faith to say, I don't know how he's going to do it. But I know he's a big God. And I know that he's more than able to meet all my needs according to his riches and glory. He's a big God. You have an opportunity, men, 
to grow your faith and, 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 and grow your relationship with other men of God. To go grow your relationship with other men of God. You know who you, you, you become, who you hang around with. Show me who you hang around with, I'll show you who you are. You hang around chickens, you must be a chicken. You got chicken faith. You come around me, man, I'm going to teach you to be an eagle. You come around the leadership, man, we're going we're gonna to teach you to fly. Some of you, I don't want to go because pastor said everybody gets to fly. And I'm scared of planes. Huh? I'll just drive. Praise God, drive. You can get there however you can get there. But eagles fly. We fly, baby. We fly because we have faith that God is the one who holds us up. God, you have an opportunity, men, before you. We have an opportunity. So, so first of all, you got to value your time by having values and having priorities. Secondly, redeem the time. Don't let time be wasted. And lastly, number three, enjoy your time. As the worship team comes up, enjoy your time. I said it, enjoy your time. Say it, enjoy. You know that serving God ain't a killjoy? Serving God is fun. Serving God is exciting. I don't know about you, but we're an exciting church. Uh, we got an exciting worship team. I mean, come on, look at our conga player. <laughs> got the dreads going. Come on, somebody. We, we, I mean, look at our choir. Look at, I'm an exciting preacher. Come on, somebody. Talk to me this morning. Friday nights are exciting. The gang at 4 p.m. on Sunday is exciting. Life flow is exciting. Your G group is exciting. It's exciting. You know another exciting place? You know another exciting place? The men's home. Ha. You, you, I mean, now they're excited. Now it's a different type of excitement. Sometimes it's yay. And sometimes it's exciting because it's like, ooh, what's going down right here? What's going <laughs> Hello, Jose knows he gets front row seats. <laughs> he lives right next door to the men's home. He, I, I just imagine though, he's like, well, what's going on in the men's home, babe? Something's going on. Somebody's, somebody's getting rolled. Somebody's getting kicked. Ida, Ida, look out the window. <laughs> well, we're an exciting church, man. The kids' gang's exciting. We're, we're an exciting ministry. So we have fun serving God. Going to Mighty Men of Valor, it's fun. The women had a great time in Guadalajara. Right? It's exciting. We have a great time at Mighty Men. Yeah, we're going to go to the conference. Or we're going to break away and go to the hats. Get a pastrami sandwich. We're going to break away, probably go to, uh, what do you call the bridge? Uh, I forgot. The, what's the name of the bridge, Irvin? Help me out. The pier, Santa Monica Pier. <laughs> Anyways, enjoy your time. Listen, you don't need alcohol. You don't need drugs to enjoy your time. That's a lie from the pits of hell. If you think that you need alcohol or drugs to have a good time, the devil and his demons have you deceived. If you think like that, you, you don't, you don't, you, the enemy has to deceive. You don't need that stuff. You don't need money to have a good time. You, you, you don't need the opposite sex to have a good time. Singles. You don't, you know, you don't need the opposite sex singles. You just need Jesus. You, you, you know what you read? You just need the Holy Ghost. Man, the Holy Ghost gives you power. And you know, he, he not only gives you power to do ministry, but he gives you power to enjoy ministry. Yeah, he gives you power to enjoy ministry. Huh? You say, man, pastor, it seems like you're always in church. I am, and I enjoy it. I love it. I'm cool, man. I love talking to people because of the love of God that's inside of me. We enjoy our time serving God. Serving God is not a killjoy. Serving the devil is. Serving Satan, serving sin is a killjoy. 
Hebrews 11.25, you know, there is pleasure in sin for a season. And Hebrews 11.25 tells us, says, there's pleasure in sin for a season. But let me give you some news, some bad news. Once that season is over, you reap chaos. You reap destruction. Once that see, there's pleasure in sin for a season. I remember first getting high. I remember the first time you hit the toque. I remember the homeboys taught me. The homeboys discipled me. Come on, I was even getting discipled in the world. Huh? And some of you, you were good disciples in the world. You taught your friends how to get high and how to drink, how to, how to sneak into the club. This is how you do it, girl. And you were teaching people the wrong stuff. And my, I remember the first time my homeboy took me behind his house and says, I'm going to teach you how to, and I, he passed, he sparked, he sparked it up and he, he took the hit and he said, now you do it. And I like puffed on it and, and let all the smoke out. And he said, what are you doing, man? You're wasting this. You don't do it like that. This is how you do it. Hold Hold it until you can't hold it no more. And you start coughing. <laughs> so yeah, that's how you do it. And then about five minutes later, we're just there. And the we're just quiet. Five minutes later. <laughs> what are you laughing at, fool? You got big nose. Right? There was pleasure in sin for a season. But you know, there came a time when I started smoking weed and I no longer laughed. Matter of fact, I no longer talked. I just stood there and stared at the wall. I couldn't even talk. They were, they would, they, they, you know, they gave me a nickname when I, was, when, I was get, when I would get high. They would call me Mumbles because I couldn't talk. When I was high, man, that was it. I couldn't talk. They would call me Mumbles. What do you you know, they try to talk to me, and I just mumble. And they're like, what are you saying? Spit it out. I was like, hey, man, I'm hot. I'm, 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 I'm high. Because after a while, listen, there's no more pleasure in sin. And then all of a sudden, you begin to reap all the chaos. I talked to, somebody called me, somebody messaged me late last night. You know, and, and it's a sad, I, I don't like getting these type of text messages. But they said, you know, guess who I seen? It was. One of the brothers from Fort Worth, he does prison ministry. He says, guess who I see? And he used to be in the home there with you. And he, he had, matter of fact, he came to the home because he was in prison and, and, and the guy told him to go to the home. And so he got out of prison and came to the home. And he was doing great. Then he left the home. And said, last night I went to preach in the prisons and guess who was there? That's right. That guy was back in prison. I sent a little sad face, and I said, he should have never left the home. Because there's pleasure in sin for a season. So th this is why, listen, if you want to backslide, you can backslide. But after a while, you're going to be back hurting and living with regrets. You don't need a backslide. Everything you need is right here serving God. But listen to this. Listen to this, this last scripture. Psalm 16, verse 11. Serving the devil is a killjoy, but serving God, the Bible says in Psalm 16, 11, listen to what it says. Psalm 16, 11. Thou was, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your presence is fullness of joy. Think about that. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, they are pleasures forevermore. It's talking about God. You want fullness of joy? It's in the presence of God. How can I describe an altar call? <laughs> I can only describe it as fullness of joy. If I can put words when I'm at the altar making an altar call. I don't know how to put words on it, but I can just look to the scripture and say, you know what? That's it right there. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. 
I can't really put my, hand, my, my finger on it, but I know I feel peace. I know I feel joy. I know I feel whole right now in the presence of God. And the good news is I didn't have to puff for it. I didn't have to drink for it. And I won't have to suffer. Come on, somebody. Because ain't no high like the most high. And ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Serving God is amazing. And it's so much fun. What are you going to do with your time? I know what I'm going to do with my time. I'm going to value it. I'm going to redeem it. And I'm going to enjoy it. I'm having fun serving God. I'm having fun. I have fun preaching. I have fun building the ministry. I have fun. I'm going to enjoy my time while I'm, while the, 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 the 25,550 days plus, hello, because I'm pretty strong, so I'm going to be past 70. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy them. How about you? Serve God. The way you enjoy them is by serving God. Stand to your feet this morning. Lift your hands to the Lord. Come on, all over this place, just lift your hands. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This morning, I'm not going to make an altar call, but I want you right there where you're at, in your chair, in your seat, I want you to make an altar call right there where you're at. As your hands are lifted, close your eyes. Feel the fullness of joy. Feel his presence. His power, Your His anointing. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Worship him, worship him. You have rescued my Spend life. Spend some time in his presence.
you right now, God. Then, Lord, I just pray for your church, God. I pray right now, God, Lord, that we would, God, feel that urgency inside of us, oh, God, to redeem the time that you have given us, God. Oh, God, to, to God, Lord, value our time, God, with you, with our family, God. I pray that you will stir inside of us, God, all a hunger, a passion, God, a zeal like never before, my God. I pray, God, Lord, that you would bring, my God, oh, God, Lord, our unsaved loved ones, God. Lord, you'll see the hearts of your people, God. Lord, that they've been crying out. trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. All the men of God, all the men of God. I trust in God. Ladies, just worship him. My Savior, men sing. the one who Never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior, one who will never fail. He will never fail. All the ladies, all the women of God, men just worship. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. One more time, ladies. I trust in God, men just worship. My Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, just worship him in your own words. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you. Seal this word in our hearts this morning. Let us carry your presence into the week. Let us value our time, redeem the time, enjoy our time. For we know that our days are numbered, God. 
So give us, teach us to number our days. Te give us a teachable spirit. Not to think that we have eternity, because we don't. We will spend e eternity with you if we surrender our hearts to you. But our days on this earth are very finite. And they're numbered, God. So help us to value each day. And take advantage of each day. Let us not spend the day being upset at each other as couples as family, as friends, as a church. Why should we let the day waste? But let us value each day and love the way you loved us. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for your word and we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We give you all the honor this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we all say, Come on, give the Lord some praise this morning. Hallelujah. If you could give me a few more moments, if they can turn the house lights on. Listen, we want to welcome everybody. We thank you for coming out. Let me see, anybody here this morning, the first time, you get a purple bag. Let me see those purple bags. Anybody get a purple bag this morning? Praise the Lord. Brown bag. Brown bag. You got a brown bag? God bless you. Amen. You are awesome this morning. Anybody else got a brown bag? God bless you. Anybody else get a brown bag this morning? Listen, in that brown bag, there's some gifts for you. But also, if you can go to our guest room, we want to give you something else in our guest room. We have a spe special small lunch for you. So listen, we want to bless you. If you can make your way to our guest room right there, our guest room right there in the back to the left with Brother Paul. If you can make your way to that guest room right there, amen. Come on, give them a hand as they make their way to our guest room. We value Woo! our guests. We value your time as well. Amen. So if you'll meet us right there in our guest room, we just want to connect with you. Amen. And we have a, a great lunch for you. Everybody else, you have a good time this morning? Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank you for joining us. Don't forget all the things that are taking place tonight at 5 p.m. We got Life Flow. If you want to continue to grow in your walk with God, we want to encourage you to come this evening at 5 p.m. for Life Flow. And then also at 4, we have God's Anointed Now Generation, the third wave for all the young people at 4 p.m. right here at the church. So we'll see you this evening, this afternoon for that. God bless you. We love you. Amen. You're dismissed. Go and enjoy and be blessed today. Hallelujah. God bless you. So